Okay, hi guys. Let's revise the current affairs of this year. We are going to start with the polity syllabus. So we are going to cover issues related to the constitution, local reservation in private sector, subcategorization of the OBCs, basic structure, universal civil code, anti-conversion laws, official language, cooperatives, overseas citizens of India, and other important uses. So first, let's talk, uh, start with the issues related with the local reservation. What is local reservation? Local reservation is basically reservation to the local candidates in the state which they are which they are born or reside into. So recently, Ariana government was challenged in Supreme Court, the order by the Punjab and Ariana High Court, and to hold the 75% quota in uh, private uh, jobs for locals. The Haryana State Employment of Local Candidates Act 2020 came into force on January 15, 2022. Haryana is not the first state to push for such a move. Other states like Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh have already tried to reserve and they were not successful. This article speaks about reserving the private jobs to the sons of the soil. The uh, the 2020 announcement by Madhya Pradesh government to re uh, reserve all the government jobs for the children of the state raised questions. It uh, it challenged in the it was challenged in the constitution because it discriminates Article 16 as it Article 16 guarantees equal treatment under laws in matters of public employment, prohibits the states from discriminating on the grounds of place of birth or residence. Article uh, 16 clause 2. No citizens shall on the ground only if religion, race, caste, sex, descent, place of birth, residence or any of them is ineligible or discriminated against in respect or any employment or office under the state. This provision is supplemented by other uh, clauses in the constitution that guarantee equality. Article 16 clause 3. It provides an exception by saying that parliament may make a law prescribing the requirement of residence of jobs in a particular state and this power is only with the parliament and not with the state legislatures so what is the judicial stand on this case judicial stand on the issue of legislation for the sons of soil there are four important landmarks cases first one is 1984 that is Dr. Pradeep Chain versus Union of India. In this, the court expressed that opinions such as policies would be unconstitutional but did not expressly rule on it as it was the case on different aspect of right of equality. In this, there is no proper output or the result which is given because it was not mainly focused upon the employment aspect. Rather, it was on right of equality. In 1995, in Sunanda Reddy was a state of Andhra Pradesh, the Supreme Court said that the observation in Pradeep Jain to strike down in a state government policy that gave 5% extra weightage to candidates who, else study, who had studied in te, with Telugu medium as a medium of instruction. In 2002, the Supreme Court invalidated appointment of government teachers in Rajasthan in which state selection board gave preference to the candidates belong to the district or rural areas of district concern. In 2019, Allahabad High Court struck down a requirement notification by the UP subordinate service selection committee commission which prescribed preference for women who are original residents of the UP. So all the cases here represent that the Supreme Court has negated the reservation for locals and stating that it cannot be done as it violates the basic principles of the basic fundamental principles. So why does it, why does our constitution prohibit the reservation based on domicile? As India has common citizenship which gives citizens the liberty to move around freely in any part of the country, the requirement of a place of birth or residence cannot be qualification for granting public employment in any state. So the next article is about subcategorization of other backward classes. Why it was news? The main reason this article is here because the 
committee justice rohini uh, rohini commission has been extended by 6 months okay let's study about what's first obc what are obc see according uh, obc is a collective term used by the government to classify castes which are social and educationally backward okay and union government had constituted a four member commission headed by justice g rohini in 2017 under article 340 with the aim to improve the equitability of sharing benefits among obc article 340 of the indian constitution lays down the conditions for appointment of commissions to investigate the conditions of backward classes this article is very important article 340 because this is the main article which gives the or lays down the uh, foundation to uh, foundation to how to uh, how to form a commission or the rules and regulation which are required to form a backward classes commission so there uh, there were four black uh, four important cases uh, landmark linear that is in 1953 first backward classes commission was set up in 1953 under the kaka kilkar the second backward classes commission was set up by was under pp mandal 1957 this one is very important in 92 in 1992 21 uh, 27% of reservation under article 16 clause 4 and 1992 creamy layer criteria invoked by the supreme, uh, supreme court in indra uh, sanvi judgment 1992 okay let's know about what's creamy layer creamy layer is anything but a household with an annual income of 8 lakh or above is not eligible for reservation and other condition which laid down in the indra sanvi case were reservation to the social and educationally backward classes 50% cap on vertical reservation there should be no reservation in promotion so basically the indra sanvi case states that there should be no creamy layer creamy, uh, creamy layer should be removed and reservation only to the socially and economic educational backward classes and there should not be any uh, no reservation in promotion everyone is equally eligible for reservation so let's talk about the national commission for backward classes it was it is a statutory uh, statutory body which means it can, it must follow the law it is a st- uh, statutory body under ncbc act 1993 the 102nd amendment act made the constitutional body as per the article 338 of the constitution key functions performed by the panel in case uh, or other uh, functions are in case of grievances related to non implementation of reservation economic grievances violence etc people will be able to move to the commission to inquire about the complaints of the deprivation of rights and safeguards so the rohini uh, commission was set up which basically divides the obc in four categories that is 1 2 4 uh, 3 4 and split the 24 uh, 27% into 2 6 9 and 10 respectively so that uh, they are going to divide uh, uh, the obc category is going to be div- uh, going to be divided into four categories the first one will get a 2% uh, reservations the second one will get 6% third one will get the 9% reservation and the fourth one will get 10% reservation in this 11 uh, states and union territories have already uh, they have already had sub categorization of obc for reservation in the state government owned institution so it's also already present in the state government but not in the central list state and center they have their own form they have their own obc list so in the one or second amendment act what are the changes which have been brought in one or second amendment act Article 338B and 348A have been added. So let's talk about 338B. 338B basically deals with the structure, duties, and powers of the National Commission for Backward Classes Commission. And 348A gives the president the power to notify a class as socially, economically backward classes, and the power of the parliament to alter the central socially, economically backward classes list. recently uh, in the news ministry of social justice and empowerment has framed an amendment to article 348a in the 127th amendment to introduce a third clause 
that is article 342a clause 3 to restore a power of states to identify OBCs to be included in the respective state list. Until now the state governments were free to decide which caste would be part of the OBCs but now separate lists have been drawn up for both center and state since 1993. Articles 15 clause 4, 15 clause 5, 15, uh, 16 clause 4 expressly conferred power on the state to identify and declare the state of socially and educationally backward classes. <laughs> Additionally, the Supreme Court has also remarked about being there as mm, being there a single list of OBC that should be issued by the president on recommendation of National Commission of, of Backward Classes. The president, president can only act on the recommendation of the National Commission of Backward Classes. Do remember this point. So other news which are related to the categorization are let OBCs and economically weaker section get quota under the All India Quota Scheme for Medical Courses. This was under the Union Health Ministry which announced 27% reservation for OBC, 10% for the AWS in AIQ scheme for all the medical and dental colleges. Uh, dental courses so it uh, in uh, courses initially there was no reservation in the scheme up to 2017 2007 after 2007 there are reservations made under this scheme other important uh, news article is article 15 under special provision for education article 15 clause 5 provides special provisions for the amendment of any social and educational backward classes of citizens or for the scheduled class and scheduled right for admission to educational institution. Based on this provision, Article 15 Clause 5, 24, 27% of the reservation, reservation in IO education institution including central government medical institution was implemented in 2016 and 7 but it did not include medical and dental seats under the All India quota for the OBC state. In 2019, the third, 103rd Amendment Act, 10% reservation was extended for higher education under Article 15 Clause 6 Clause B. It also included medical and dental. So the difference between these two are in All India quota, previously it was not there. Now because of Clause 15, Clause 6, Clause B, there is reservation for OBCs in medical and dental courses. The, this article speaks about that reservations of OBCs in medical and dental courses and other higher education. Basically, in this, only, uh, we are talking about the medical uh, courses and here about uh, all higher education courses, including the medical and dental ones. So next one is the reservation in the local body pools. Center is considering a more re review petition for the Supreme Court to allow political reservation of OPC in local bodies and municipal corporation for the first time till the states comply with the triple test criteria. What, let's see what's triple test criteria. First you have to know what is triple test criteria so it will be easier for to, uh, for you to know what the article is talking about so article triple uh, so triple test talks about dedicating a commission to conduct a contemporary rigorous empirical inquiry any commission should have, do a proper inquiry and there are the, it has three clause one is a commission it should be set up for the inquiry the second one is proportion of reservations required and the third one is the reservation should not exceed the 50% seats in favor of SC, ST and OBCs together. Together, it should only come like combined, it should be 50%. It should not exceed more than 50%. Triple test means first one is you have to have a commission. Second one is how many, how we will talk about the proportion of the reservation. Third one is the reservation should not exceed more than 
earlier the supreme court had decided to strike down 27% reservation in favor of obcs in local body bodies made by maharashtra and madhya pradesh government the supreme court are based supreme court orders are based on krishnamurthy judgment stressing that the barriers to political participation are not same nor of the barriers that assess limit to education and employment so here the important article is krishnamurthy judgment guys you have to remember the krishnamurthy judgment because uh, one question or like any question in the mains when it's given regarding the obcs you can mention the krishnamurthy judgment and you can get more marks so the next article talks about the basic principle so why is this article important in this because keshav nanda bharti of the landmark keshav nanda bharti case um, versus state of kerala has passed away so let's know about the keshav nanda bharti case so what does it talk about keshav nanda bharti case it's a case dealt with a petition against kerala government challenging the compulsory acquisition of his land by the government under under the kerala land reforms act 1963 as it was violation of the fundamental right as enshrined in article 25 uh, 26 27 of the 25 26 31 of the constitution the case had been uh, had by 13 bench 13 church 13 member uh, 13 church bench so let's see about why it's important and it talks about the basic principles that is doctrine of la, uh, doctrine structure doctrine of the basic structure so let's talk about the cases here so uh, which led to the basic structure evolution so in 15 uh, 1951 Uh, and 1965 that is shankari prasad case and sajjan singh case the parliament said that fundamental rights can be amended under article 368 the article remember guys please do remember the article 368 and in 1967 in gulaknath case it said it did not confer amending power to the parliament and fundamental rights can be uh, cannot be amended by the parliament so here it was said fundamental rights can be amended under the article 368 in gulaknath case it say you can't amend the fundamental rights in 1971 there was 24th constitutional amendment act and 25th constitutional amendment act in 24th it said that constitutional amendment is not law and the article 13 so parliament can amend it but in 25th what did it say in section 2 and section 3 it curtailed the right to property with due compensation and it gave precedence of dpsp over the fundamental rights to cover the scope of judicial review for article 39b and 39c so it up to this there was no proper conclusion in in one case the supreme court said Uh, you can amend while in the other it said you can't and uh, it, so the basic the importance of this article is because kishan in the bharti case it let down the basic structure of the constitution it said you can't amend it line of thought maintained and strengthened in the subsequent judgments are like minerva mills case sr bombay case ir kolo case so these are the basic elements of the uh, basic elements of the constitution you can study it or so let's know about what what were the outputs of the keshav nanda bharti case it upheld the validity of 24th amendment supreme court held that uh, parliament had the power to amend any or all the provisions of the constitution with the condition that the amendment should not alter or destroy the basic feature of the fundamental rights of the constitution this is known as basic structure doctrine it corrected the judgments of the gulaknath case supreme court held that 36 article 368 contained both powers and procedure for amending the constitution and the amending power and legislative powers of the parliament were different other judgments 
uh, Supreme Court held the 25th and 29th amendments except for the parts that curtail this power of the ju uh, judicial review also asserted that preamble is a part of constitution and hence amendable. So uh, next article is about the Uniform Civil Code. So Uniform Civil Code, is, uh, well, let's see why it's in the news. Recently, the Ministry of Law and Justice said in response to the response to the public interest litigation filed in 2019 that implementation of the Uniform Civil Code is a matter of public policy and no direction in this regard can be issued by the court. So let's talk about UCC that it is Uniform Civil Code. It provides one law for the entire country applicable to all the religious communities in their personal matters such as marriage, divorce, inheritance, adoption, etc. Because basically right now every religion has its own set of laws and governments wants to bring a uniform law which is applicable to every single citizen of India. So article speaks about that. Here, the article 20, uh, 44 of the constitution lays down that the state, a state shall endeavor to secure UCC for citizens through the throughout the territory of India. So let's see the status of uniform civil code in India. Indian laws do not follow uh, do follow a uniform civil code in most civil matters. Examples which you can give are Indian Contract Bill, Civil Procedure Code, Transfer of Property Act, Partnership Act, Evidence Act. Recently, several co uh, states refused to be by, governed by the Uniform Motors Vehicles Act 2019. Goa is the only state, Indian state, to have UCC in the form of common family law. So, if we let, uh, see about the background of UCC, it, uh, it was before uh, UCC was used before the independence and after the independence too. Before independence, it was Lex Loki report of uh, October 1940. It stressed the important and necessity of uniformity in the codification of Indian law relating to the crimes, evidence, and contract. But it also recommended the personal laws should be kept outside su such codification. Next one is the Queen's 1980 Queen's 80, 1859 proclamation. It promised absolute non-interference in the religious matters. And next one is B.N. Rao Committee. It was formed to codify Hindu law in 1941. So let's talk about the post-independence one. The Hindu Court Bill. It was drafted by Dr. B. Ambedkar to reform Hindu laws which legalized the divorce opposed polygamy gave rights to inheritance to daughter. The next one is Hindu Succession Act 1956 to amend and codify the law related to interstate or unwilled succession among Hindus, Buddhists, Jains and Sikhs. However, there were separate laws for Muslims, Christians and Parsis. The next one is Landmark Court Cases. The Landmark Court Cases in here are Shah Banu Case, Sara Madkal Case, Daniel Latfi Case, it all moved towards the uniform civil code. The next article speaks about anti-conversion law. So anti-conversion law, the Karnataka Legislative Assembly passed the Karnataka, High, Karnataka Right to Freedom of Religion Bill 2021, commonly referred to the anti-conversion bill. So other states do have the anti-conversion laws. You can refer to that here. So let's talk about the history of anti-conversion laws. Before the independence, it was introduced by it uh, like anti-conversion laws were already present in the Hindu uh, princely states due, uh, because they wanted to preserve their religious identity and to stay away from the influence of the Christian Christian missionaries. So few of the acts which were done brought up in during that time were Tiger State Conversion Act 1936, the Partner Freedom of Religion Act 1942, Udaipur State Anti-Conversion Act 1946. So some of the field levels at the national level are in 1954, Indian Conversion Bill was introduced. 
1960 backward uh, communities bill was introduced in 1957 freedom of religion bill was introduced however all of them failed due to lack of support in the parliament so now the current stand is the stand is the law prime is uh, law minister said that the matter is purely a sub, uh, state subject and legislating such a law by parliament would not be concur in uh, accordance with the tenets of the constitution this means anti conversion laws are completely in the domains of the state so let's see different verdicts here important court verdicts is first one is rave stanislaus versus state of madhya pradesh in this the court upheld the constitutionality of the earliest anti conversion statutes the madhya pradesh and odisha in this the freedom to propagate one's religions as stipulated in the article 25, 25 clause 1 did not grant a fundamental right to convert another person the bench ruled that purposive conversion would infringe on the freedom of conscience guaranteed to the all the citizens it also upheld the anti conversion act fall with the purview of entry one of list two of seven schedule as they want the as they are meant to avoid disturbances in the public order by prohibiting conversion from one religion to another in a manner reprehensible to the conscience of the community so here it just speaks about the article 25 uh, 25 clause 1 in which you can propagate a religion but you can't forcefully convert other person because it's against the freedom of cons- uh, conscience the next important case is sara madkal case in this case supreme court held that the conversion to islam was not valid if done only in order to able to practice polygamy what is polygamy marrying one or more lata singh versus state of up the court highlighted the need for stringent uh, punishment over the acts of violence or threats in the cases of interstate and interreligious marriages m chandra versus m tungamuttu and other 29 the supreme court laid down the test to prove conversion first there has to be a conversion and second one it, the conversion should be accepted into the community in with which the person has been converted into so next article speaks about the language so here the tulu speakers are demanding to be added into the official language status official language status is in the 8th schedule of the constitution let's talk about tulu tulu it's a dravidian language mainly spoken in two coastal regions of dakshina kannada and udupi of karnataka and kasaragod of kerala basically it's spoken only in two districts and what is the importance of being an official language at uh, as part 17 of the indian constitution deals with official language in article 343 to 351 remember the article 343 to 351 the constitution powers relating to the eight constitution occur in, in article 344 clause 1 and 351 of the constitution languages are added through constitutional amendments the constitution does not specify the official language of different states and at present there is no such criteria for languages to be included in eighth schedule article 345 of the constitution says that legislature of the state may by law adopt any one or more of the language in use in the state or hindi as a language or languages to be used for all or any of the official purpose of the state basically what does article 345 speak about in this the constitution can add any law uh, can add any language into the eighth schedule it's it's is uh, it's the choice of the parli- uh, legislature then let's talk about the significance of being under article 8 see being in the uh, article uh, being in the eighth schedule sorry being in the eighth, uh, eighth schedule it the language gets recognized as an official language of the nation and it would get promotion in the sahitya academy and people will start recognizing the language and books 
and it uh, the books can be translated into other rich, recognized indian languages and mps and mlas belong to that uh, language can speak in the uh, parliament and state assemblies and candidates can write exams in the in their language so next article speaks about the speaks about cooperatives so why was cooperation uh, cooperatives in uh, in news so recently a separate ministry of cooperation has been created by the central government so what let's talk about what is cooperatives cooperatives is in uh, is an voluntary association of individuals having common needs who join hands for attaining of common economic goals and interests their main motto is economic goals and interest and they have the same common needs in 97 constitutional amendment act 2011 insertion of article 19 clause 1 clause c that to make a right to form cooperative societies to fundamental rights insertion of article 43b in part 4 of the constitution and part 9b was inserted and part 9b it has been extended from article 343zh to article 343zd and uh, here the sir frederick nilsson nicholson is known as the father of cooperative movement in the country so what is the use of co uh, cooperatives cooperatives fall in the state list of seven schedule forming cooperatives is a fundamental right and the article under amendment act 1997 the promotion of cooperatives is also a constitutional derivative of the state mentioned under dpsp that is article 43b of the constitution multi state cooperative societies act 2002 provide for registration of societies with operation in more than one state Recently, the Supreme Court has narrowed part of the 97th Amendment Act and Part 9b of the Constitution. As 97th Amendment Act was passed without getting them ratified by the state legislature as required by the Constitution, the court declared that Part 9b of the Constitution is operative only if so far as it concerns multi-state cooperative society, both within the various states and union territories the next article is about the oci ocis are overseas citizens of india ocis plan to challenge the home ministry's notification that required professional oci such as journalists and researchers to notify about the activities in india so here the oci had to notify about the activities in india so what is the issues it equates india domicile oci with a foreigner basically oci don't have passports that is the reason they don't have indian passport so they can be treated uh, they are they are equal to a foreigner and they have they get extra arbitrary fee, high fees under the nri quota cannot be afforded by ocis the uh, india domicile oci are deprived of domical status both in india as well as the country of origin because they don't have indian passport so basically let's know what is a oci who is a oci any person registered as oci card holder under section 7a of citizenship act 1955 and there of indian origin but but hold foreign passports they don't hold indian passport but an nri holds indian passport and reside outside of india in this the osa can enter multiple times with lifelong visa for visiting india exemption from registration for any length of stay in india as per the citizenship act 19 55 person registered as an oci for 5 years or was ordinarily resident in india for 12 months before making an application for registration is eligible for citizenship so let's talk about citizenship act 1955 
it's a part of the constitution having article 5 to 11 deals with citizenship of india citizenship act 1955 provides acquisition of indian citizenship via birth reset registration naturalization and it prescribes three ways of losing indian citizenship that is renunciation termination uh, termination and deprivation renunciation means you are getting uh, citizenship of some other countries so you automatically your citizenship with india will be terminated so let's see about let's see about other important news so the first one is it talks about the constituent assembly recently the constitution uh, assembly has completed 74 years since first sitting so constitution constituent assembly met for the first time in new delhi on december 6 1946 in the central hall of parliamentary house Cabinet Mission Plus 1946 created the CA of India and it was recognized by Section 8 of Indian Independence Act 1947 and it was a result of partition under the Mountbatten plan and first sitting was presided over by Dr. Sachidananda Sinha and it took 2 years 11 uh, months and 17 days for drafting of the constitution for independent India. So the next article speaks about reservation and promotions with PWDs. Supreme Court directs the center to issue instruction for reservation and promotion for PWDs with, uh, in accordance with Section 34 of the Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act 2016. Important art, uh, section is here is 30, Section 34. It uh, prescribes not less than 4% reservation for PWDs with benchmark disabilities. According to the PWD Act, a person with disability benchmark disability means a person with not less than 40% of specified disability as certified by the certifying authority. There are 25, uh, 21 types of disabilities which have been covered under this Act. So let's see about the benchmark cases. The first one is Siddharaju versus State of Karnataka. January 2020 judgment. In this, the Supreme Court confirmed that PWDs have the right for reservation in promotion as well as requirement recruitment. However, this is not implemented by the state. The next one is National Federation of the Blind case. In this, the Supreme Court held that computation of the reservation for PWDs has to be done in the case of Group A. B, C, and D both by computing the sufficient total number of vacancies in the cadastre that is both identified and non-identified post. The next one is Rajiv Kumar Gupta. In this case, the Supreme Court directed the government to extend reservation to PWDs in all identified posts in Group A and Group B. Next article is about government aid. In this, the Supreme Court held that the constitution right to Government aid under Article 30 Clause 2 is not a fundamental right. Here it is saying it's not a fundamental right to get the aid under, gov under government. Art uh, Article 30 Clause 2 states that, states that the government should not discriminate against any educational institution while giving an aid. Article 30 of the Constitution is responsible is subject to reasonable restrictions. Here, the main two uh, important article is 30 clause 2 and 30. In 30 clause 2, the uh, government cannot discriminate while giving an aid. In this, there has reason. Uh, it has reasonable restriction. The next article speaks about sedation. So let's know what is sedation first. Section 124A of the IPC defines sedation as an offence committed by a person brings or attempts to bring into hatred or contempt, excites or attempts to excite dissatisfaction towards the government established by the law in India. Any person can be charged under sedition who basically triggers a person against the government in any form. That is by 
that is words signs visible representation or otherwise and sedition is a non payable offense it provides punishment punishment for imprisonment imprisonment of life or imprisonment up to 3 years with fine also in this various verdicts in romesh thapar case kedarnath singh case and hayak kumar case redefined as sedition act only if it has essential ingredient ingredients as disruption of the public order attempt to violate violently overthrow a lawful government threatening the security of state or public so the main three important points which you have to remember at sedition is first one is there should there should be a disruption of public order and if a person attempts to overthrow a government forcefully the th- uh, third one is uh, if the security of the state or a person is state or a public is affected under this three clause these three conditions you can be put under sedition and it's non bearable offense the next one is hate speech home minister constituted panel to such it reforms on offenses related to the speech and expression as there is no clear definition of what constitutes hate speech in ipc the committee for reforms in criminal laws is attempting for the first time to define such speech hate speech has never been defined in our constitution first time first time the a committee has been set up to define it earlier the bureau of police research and development had defined its speech as language that denigrates insults threatens or targets an individual based on their identity and other traits also the un national security general released strategy and plan of action on hate speech it sets out strategic guidance for the un nations un system to address hate speech at national and global level so legal provisions of hate speech in india are restriction imposed by article 19 clause 2 of the constitution section 124a ipc which penalizes to sedition section 153a and 153b of the ipc section 5051 clause 1 and 2 of the ipc 267th report of the national commission this 267th report defines hate speech as an incitement to hate it primarily against a group of person defined in terms of race ethnicity gender sexual orientation religion belief and the like important his uh, committees which are formed in this are vishwanathan committee and bezurba committee in vishwanathan committee it proposed to insert section 153b and section 505a in the ipc for the incitement to commit an offense on base offense on the grounds of traits such as religious religion race caste community sex gender sexual orientation etc in besuba committee it proposed amendment to section 153c of the ipc which is punishable by 5 years and ca- and fine or both and section 1 uh, 509a of ipc which is punishable by 3 years or fine or in this in either of the two cases 153c you will get 5 years prison and fine or both in 509a 3 years prison or prison fine or you can get both the next one is this sacrilege the article sacrilege talks about punjab government returning uh, as returned to the center to assent the to state bill that proposes life imprisonment for discretion of religious scriptures of four religions let's talk about let's know about what is sacrilege sacrilege means treating a religious object or a place without respect that it deserves as india being a secular state it protests protects all religion by its laws section 295 and 295a 296 297 and 298 of the ipc are treated with the sacrilege incidents 295 section 295 deals with punishment if any person intentionally damages destroys or defiles any religious objects deemable as sacred deemable to be sacred by the followers of any religion 
and section 295A it deals with punishment if a person is maliciously by words spoken or written or signs or visible representation insults or attempts to insult religious sentiments. In 295 it basically speaks any person can be booked under this if he speaks about it or speaks or writes or shows signs or visible representation he can if he spreads or hatred or if it disrespects you can be booked under this the next article is about preventive detention in Banka Sneha Shalva state of the Langana case the Supreme Court ruled that the provision for preventive detention can be in can't, can't be invoked or the apprehension of law and order problems but in case where public order is directly affected so what is preventive detention the action to detain a person taken on the grounds of suspicion that some wrong actions may be done by the persons. Article 22 of the Indian Constitution provides protection against arrest and detention in certain cases. However, these rights can't be granted to an alien or person detained under preventive detention laws. The next article is about right to protest. Recently, the Supreme Court observed the right to protest of farmers should not enter the traffic or public movement. So, Article Right to Protest is an Article 19 Clause 1 Clause A and 19 Clause 1 Clause B. The right to preserve is a, and it's a fundamental right. It allows the people to assemble and express their views through a peaceful protest, threatening India's democracy by holding government accountable and raise voice against the misuse of powers. It's not an absolute right. Under Article 19 Clause 2 and 19 Clause 3, it's subjectable to reasonable restriction. Any, any protest without being harmed is a right to protest. The next article is about right to be forgotten. So here the Delhi High Court has appealed the right to be forgotten as of an individual. It is a right to have the personal information removed from publicly available sources and it comes under, comes under the right to privacy. India lacks statutory provisions regarding the RTPF and the Personal Data Bill 2019 includes it, but it lacks right to erasure of data as given by the European GDPR's Article 17, outlining the circumstances under which individuals can exercise their right to be forgotten or right to erasure. The next article is about Article 311 of the Indian Constitution. A Jammu and Kashmir teacher was terminated from his service without holding any inquiry. So in here, Article 311 Clause 2 mandates the prior inquiry before dismissal, removal or reduction in rank of the government employees. However, Article 13, 311 Clause 2 Clause 3 Clause C provides that no prior inquiry is required the president or the governor is satisfied that in the interest of security of the state it is not expedient to hold such an inquiry here it speaks about how article 311 clause 2 clause c gives an option not to chuck not to inquire when it's about the state Set when it's about the state security. The next one is article. The uh, next article is about the foreigners tribunals. As some government ordered the state police border wing not to forward any case against Gurkhas to the foreign tribunal. These are the quasi judicial bodies established as per the for foreigners order 1964 to give an opinion whether the person is a foreigner or not in accordance with the Foreigners Act. The, uh, this uh, act empowers the central government to make provisions regarding the foreigners entry or departure. It was first adopted in 1964 and is unique to Assam. In the rest of the country foreigner apprehended by the police for staying illegally is prosecuted by a local court and later deported or put into a detention center. There are two kinds of FTEs, one those against whom a reference has been made by border police and the other whose names have been in the electoral have been doubtful against them. 
In 2019, Ministry of Home Affairs amended Foreigners Order 1964 empowering districts, magistrates in all states and union territories to set up tribunals to decide whether the person staying illegally is in India is a foreigner or not. Earlier, the powers to constitute foreign tribunals was only vested with center. Now it it's empowered, it has empowered all the district magistrate and has set up tribunals.